Today, Southwest states, namely Lagos, Ogun, Oyo, Ondo, Oshun, and Ekiti state, launched a security formation to tackle the problem of insecurity within the region. This collaboration tagged Operation Amotekun is expected to complement the efforts of the regular police in the area of combating kidnapping and robbery, as well as headsmen and farmers' contentions. I'm being joined by legal practitioner Mitchell Agatise. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for having me, Felicity. Thank you. All right. So I'm sure you've heard of this Amotekun um, for a while. Yes. There are people that are saying uh, that this is a manifestation of the fact that um, there is a failure in the current security um, structure yes. of this country. Yes. What do you say to that? Well, um, thank you very much. Um, I think that merely looking at the situation on ground shows you that there is some, there's more to be done. In the like of the fact that we're seeing more and more kidnappings, we're seeing more herdsmen attacks and the like. So. I think it's not news that there is a lot to be done in terms of security. I wouldn't go as far as saying a total failure, because if there was a total failure, I doubt that both of us could even be sitting down here. But um, we're not where we're supposed to be, and a lot more has to be done. Okay, so the commissioner in Ekiti State mm -hmm. talked about the fact that this, um, because there were worries that is it supposed to replace the police in saying that mm -hmm. no, this is not going to happen. And then again, he goes on to say that vehicles have been bought, logistics yes. have been deployed, yes. and um, uh, they are going to be complemented yes. by the vigilantes. Some say this is this clarification is even making things a little bit more ambiguous if you okay. consider the fact that the constitution clearly states that yes. the police is responsible uh, for law and order. Uh, yeah. So, yes. what, what's your take? On that. Yeah, um, I think that it's about innovative solutions. Um, it's always important, even as a government, be you local government, state government, or even your estate security or your estate chairmanship council, to have to be understand that security is something important that needs to be dealt with. Now, there are two issues that arise. Number one is the fact that exclusively under the constitution, the Nigerian police force is tasked with this responsibility. And if you know, and I'm sure as you were aware, um, there's been a lot of debate over the past couple of years, decades even, as to the creation of state police. So taking away that behemoth power from the federal government and taking it down to the state government. The reason for that was that, well, if you're dealing state government level, then the people know who they're policing. There's easier uh, ways, ways of managing this, and there's better coordination. Now, we've not gotten that. And there are ills of that as well, because you have a federal government who is scared of uprising well, there are people and the who like. Are actually that yes. this is a subtle realization of the uh, quest for um, state police. restructuring and yes. state police. Yeah. So the point I'm trying to make is that despite the fact that there have been those debates as to whether you have a state police, it's more like, for me, a midway ground between not having any form of control over the security at all and also not having the full state police. It's a midway ground by which you have some form of complementary body. The complementary body is not the police force. The, for, to my mind, I do not see that they're jailing people. To my mind, I do not see that they have um, court competent um, powers to be able to say, okay, there's an order of court telling Amotekun, go and arrest XYZ person. They're not going to be doing those, um, you know, broad police functions. It's instead the case that there are places that you would have a robbery attack. You need to have a quick phone call. You're in the hinterland, you're in the rural areas. Who do you call? You know that you can call these bodies who would get in there almost like um, um, citizen arrest arrests, more or less, where the citizens can arrest while waiting for the police force. That's what happens in your estate, when your estate security can arrest. So think of it more as security as against police force, to my mind. That is how I'd like to think about it. I'm sure driving around Lagos, even before the Amotekun, you've been seeing the LNSC, Lagos Neighborhood Security Watch. Think of a Lagos well, Neighborhood Security Watch on a regional level. Like yes. leadership structure, yes. who will be they in charge. To, et what we saw today yes. from some of the pictures that yes. are already emerging yes. are vehicles, branded yes. vehicles yes. that will be used by these people. Yes. A lot of monies seem to yes. have been expended. Yes. So w wouldn't it have been better? Because yes. we keep complaining about the police not yes. being properly, properly funded, funded yes. and they need to get manpower. Yes. This same manpower that will yes. be recruited for this Amotekun. Yes. 
can't that have been done important for thing. the police? Important thing, Felicity. Um, this is not the state government. The state government cannot recruit for the police. The police is a federal government body, one. Two, the state government, even if they said that, okay, here is some money, we're donating police cars and stuff, which you see in Lagos, which you see across the country with so Dangote they might not donated. Have much yeah, say yeah, about yeah, so you don't have a say, actually. You have no say whatsoever but then, as to the, how the policing I, I, is done. I seem, I seem to be interrupting you yes. a lot, but that also brings up the question of using these same outfits for yes. personal gains. There yes. is a fear yes. that since they now have, these governors now have yes. this authority to create this yes. kind of security yes. outfit, there is yes. a possibility that they will use it no. for um, personal squabbles, yes. so to speak. Yes, but the same applies for even a personal bodyguard network, if you think about it. This is, think of a personal bodyguard network on a larger scale. However, where I'll be more concerned is if you're equipping them with guns, for example. They, I, I, in all the reports that I have seen, there are no um, equipment of guns and the like. These are just batons, you know, torchlights, vehicles to ensure that they complement, get in there first and ensure that, okay, police guys, you know, come on over. We've arrested these guys or we know that there's going to be a violent attack here or there. We've always had vigilante forces. You have OPC, for example, in Lagos, where some estates even pay for OPC to guard their property. Isn't this such an unorganized structure? And what I think they're trying to do is formalize the structure that we already have, have a proper reporting network, have people that they're accountable to, such that if you're arrested by a motekun or you're harassed by a motekun, at least you're not just saying, oh my God, the area boys have done this again. But you know that, okay, I can report to a higher level of authority and there is some form of accountability. And who's going to ensure the accountability? The police. So for me, how, it's a win-win. How are we sure <laughs> that, the, will the police be supervising all of this? Well, not supervising. I'm just saying that it doesn't take away from the police's responsibility to maintain law and order. So if you're harassed by a motorcycle on the road, I do not see how you cannot go and report to the police and the police cannot then arrest them because well, they are not an investigatory body as I see it. They are not a policing body or even paramilitary body as I see it. They're more complementary in the sense of just having more presence, being aware, seeing things. Who are the people who would ask, okay, I'm not you guys are in charge of this local government. We heard a report about a robbery incident happening here. What happened? Were you guys there? Did you see anything? Did you not see anything? Well, how can these people be effective? Yes. Remember, um, they're saying that they cannot bear arms. Yes. Wouldn't that affect their effectiveness? Because well, if you're saying that it's just, in, they're going to be in risky situations. Yes. If, for instance, you talked about armed robbery. Yes. Armed. Yes. These yes. people will be armed, yes. robbing a place. Yes. And then you expect that these people will that are not armed, armed yes. will go and confront. How yes. would that scenario yes. work? But remember also, and again, going back to what I understand Amota going to be, they're not a police body, neither are they paramilitary, that they're going to be able to put themselves in so all harm's way. However, 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 in a situation like that, where you know that, look, there are armed robbers around this area or vicinity. They might make noise. They might go and report to the police. They might get the police down there. They can use their own vehicles to get across. They can amass boys in the area to stop people. And you have to also realize that crime is much, more, much broader than armed crime. You know, you have theft that happens on the road. You have people that snatch bags. You have people that assault people. You have the area boys and what they do. There's a lot that happens. And when you think of a police body that is properly armed, do you really want them to be bothering themselves with every little matter when there are bigger crimes to solve? So I'm sure you've also seen on the roads, and this is even on a federal level, where you have like your man o' war, more or less complimenting the police. Um, in, in, in places of warfare, even the federal government has the joint civilian and military task forces. And that's what that some they persons use. are citing exactly. as, and what you yes. need for the not is. Exactly. So because you know that you need more personnel, you know that there are a lot of people who otherwise may even be criminals themselves. And you're just formalizing their structure and ensuring that you're able to maintain the eventual goal, which is peace and security. However, the point you make is very valid as to, number one, what are their terms of engagement? Number two, who do they report to? Number three, what is their accountability structure? Number four, who pays for them? Number five, 
do they become so irresponsible that the governors can basically use them as machinery during elections? These are very, very valid questions that need to be asked. And these are things that need to be used and posed in order to keep the government, the government, I say the government because it was the regional governments that came together to create this body. Um, then you have to pose these questions to these regional governments to ensure that they remain what they have been constituted for which is to maintain or to assist the police and the formal bodies in maintaining peace and security and do not become an extra leg of area boys, or should I say formalized area boys or well, formalized yeah, illegals. Uh, a lot of persons are buying into this idea. Yes. And if you look at it, we do need security yes. in this country. Yes. But these administrations are transient. Yes. Maximum eight years. Yes. What about... Sustainability. Succession. Yes. How do we ensure that this, or do we envisage that this um, operation will be enough to eradicate all the mm -hmm. criminality and insecurity in this country? Mm -hmm. So by the time this tenor goes, someone else, what mm -hmm. happens about? Because that is one critical mm -hmm. problem. All these monies are being expended. Mm -hmm. Well, in terms of innovative solutions such as this, um, I always insist that um, a formal structure undergirds the innovation, such that it doesn't, as you have rightly said, just become a four-year thing, whereas they become something that we cannot even deal with subsequently. Um, for me, if there is a proper structure by which um, there are some certain regional laws, that's state laws now, state legislation, formalizing this, setting out maybe a commission that is in charge of this and the like, that is different from the police because you have to be careful in passing any such law, that you're not straying into the remit of what the Federal National Assembly can pass and the laws they can be because then it then becomes illegal or lawful or void. For me, however, I think that if they are also innovative in the type of laws that they pass, in the type of ensuring that you know remuneration always remains um, funded directly from the state budgets, um, well, I, ensuring that there's a commission that, that supervises it. All that taken care of before this launch date because remember yes. that the, the idea wasn't muted today. Yes. It was way back in June yes. when they had their summit. It yes. took them about six months yes. to come to the point of launch. Yes. Shouldn't that um, have been And despite the there? fact that they've launched it, I have not seen Amoteco on the road. So this might just be the platform for them to ensure that all the T's and all the I's are dotted. And um, as we sometimes see in Nigeria, which is unfortunate, we have um, big commissioning ceremonies for um, infrastructure that's not ready to go. <laughs> Okay, so there is this group that came up, um, I can't remember the name now, they came up, a civil society group yes. uh, that came up and said that um, they worry strongly about the conflict with the police. Okay. Shouldn't, in this instance, the supervisory role of the police be clearly stated? Because yes. what the Akiti government is saying is that um, complement, m most of what you've said, yes. complementary role, yes. helping with investigation, mm -hmm. trying to tie loose ends to help the police with yes. their investigations. Yes. So shouldn't the role of the police be clearly stated in this setup well, so there is no conflict? Yes. Well, I think it's um, the other way around, actually, because the police is in that field and the police has the legal basis to be in that field beyond any act in the Constitution. So anything else has to, should I say, work within the remit of what the police permits. So in terms of proper structuring, the proper structuring which I expect has been done, and I will be surprised if it has not been done, is that these state governments had previously had discussions with the Inspector General of Police and the relevant bigwigs in terms of policing and said that this is what we want to do here, this is how we would work, and they have a collaborative structure such that even the police as well recognize who these people are and would go to these people. Because it's a different ball game if the police arrive and, you know, yeah, I'm a con, you know, we're helping. And they're like, no, everybody inside, we're there. going to jail. <laughs> then, you know, distrust comes up and all of that comes up. But um, sometimes the trouble we run in making this analysis is because we look at it on the big picture. Think of a village. Imagine that this whole Southwest was just a village of 100 people. And they've designated in this village of 100 people that these five people 
you people will be responsible for overseeing security. Whenever there's an issue, please make sure you investigate because you guys are well trained and all of that. And these guys ensure that that happens. And whenever there's a theft, they immediately apprehend the person and say, we're taking you to the police station. Now, that model is what we have elevated on a regional scale. So I think that a lot of the issues that we're having with it now is because we're trying to elevate Amotek onto what they are not. I don't think that they have created a police force. I think that they have just formalized an informal structure that we've always had and made it more coordinated. Thank you very much yeah, for your thoughts you. on the program this evening. And of course, thank you for staying with us thus far, but we're not done yet. We'll go take our plus package and when we return, we'll be talking a lot more. Stay with us. No organization can advance beyond the competence and dedication of its strategic leaders. Neither can any organizational goals and plans be attained without a crop of highly committed personnel to drive the implementation process. The rapidly changing dynamics of crime and the attendant increasing threat to security requires quality police managers that have the requisite professional knowledge, experience, and competency to effectively provide leadership directed at managing such internal security threats. The impact of this is that any organization that does not or delays in recognizing the potentials of its personnel and rewarding them by promoting those eligible as at when view stands the risk of retaining crops of highly demotivated officers who will not be optimally dedicated to the standards and goals of the institutions. I'm confident that you will deploy your wealth of experience towards supporting the Nigeria police in the attainment of our mandate, especially at this critical time in our nation's internal security evolution. Let me, however, remind the promoters that to whom much is given, much is expected. Crime, as you know, is a dynamic and increasingly complex phenomenon, and the nation demands of your high level of loyalty, courage, and professional competence needed to move the Nigeria police and indeed the nation to the next level in relation to internal security. The operation Amoteku has not been designated a police force, but for me, isn't a lot to celebrate. And I do see the need to be for our security. My take tonight is an appeal to the Southwest governors to emphasize through the leadership of the operation that it is not a rival to the Nigerian police and that its role should be complementary. Their work should be more of intelligence gathering, as our guest said earlier, and providing support in criminal investigations to feed the police with evidence and not to take the law into their hands. That said, the answer to the myriad of security challenges in this country does not entirely rest on creating security operations or state or regional police or even equipping and enhancing the work of the Nigerian police through adequate funding. What would give us a glimmer of hope, in my opinion, would be real efforts at addressing the fundamentals of unemployment, religious extremism and ethnic sentiments amplified by the heartbreaking levels of poverty among a higher percentage of the population. But this is a fertile ground for grooming all kinds of criminality and finding recruits to perpetrate more mayhem in the country. And that's our program tonight. If you missed it, there is a repeat at 2 p.m. every weekday and you can join us again at 7 p.m. Always a pleasure to have your company on the program. Thanks for watching. Until next time, be well.